Hi everybody, welcome and welcome to well moulding at your bench, making moulds at your bench. Now, cut a long story short, I've been wanting to do my own moulds for a long, long time, and when I started to look at things on YouTube and everything, it everybody made it so complicated and so expensive and it sort of really did put me off but it didn't deter me and I ended up working a little system out for myself using just the things that I've got around me i.e. because I'm a modeler and I wanted to use just the stuff that I had at hand I didn't want to go out and buy expensive bits and pieces because if it's got the word modeling on it it starts working out expensive so that's the reason why we're here and hopefully over the next couple of videos I can uh, just help you uh, save some money uh, save a lot of mistakes because I've been doing this now for three months and I've done a lot of experimenting and I've made a lot of mistakes believe me I've made a lot of mistakes and uh, I've finally got it down to uh, a reasonable system for, for myself and I will say this is just for myself and I'm going to show you my little system and then you can take from it what you want and uh, you can then go from there so that bit over and done with let's start with uh, actually making a master uh, for your mould now the perfect scenario is I have got this mould from Diorama Deveries, fantastic mould, and this is of blocks for stone wall blocks. The problem being is that these blocks, there's eight different sizes, different thicknesses, and different depths, and they're all in the same mould. Now, there's certain p uh, pieces in this that are very useful for making uh, block paving, or if you just want the larger blocks to do block walls, and it's very annoying because to get the quantities that you need you have to start casting a lot out and you end up with a lot of uh, blocks and that that you don't use which to me is frustrating because I'm not actually tight but I do like to get the most from uh, the products that I'm using and if I'm using plaster it still costed me so I don't want to be casting a lot of stuff that I'm never going to use so what I'm going to do on this top, this one, is that I've already made a mould up previously for the actual large blocks because I needed just large blocks and I actually made a mould up. Now this is uh, quite an old one, uh, I think this was about my third or fourth attempt at making moulds but as you can see I've got the mould roughly down to the same size as uh, Diorama Debris one uh, not as thin because diorama debris they actually use a vacuum uh, system where they actually inject it into a mold and vacuum all the air out of it where mine we have to use well I'm using no vacuum chamber but just a vibrating table so what I'm going to do now is show you how I make the master to actually cast a mold with now to make a master we need some sort of material to actually start building this mould on well the master copy should I say my go to material is styrene now this is 2 mil thick uh, this is not a branded styrene i.e. it's not an evergreen or any of the other makes the simple reason is I find the evergreens and all that lot very very expensive for two sheets I think they're about £9 this is an un uh, branded sheet I get this off the internet it's about 135 a sheet very cheap I can get 10 sheets of this to the price of one sheet of the oh sorry two sheets of the evergreen now this is my base this is what I start with and to start off with what we need to do is work out 
well not actually work out but I've already sorted out what I'm actually going to be using it's going to be these small blocks that uh, have come out of that selection of blocks that I've got now there's roughly about what 60 here I don't know if we're going to be using all of them but I fished out about 60 and it's a matter of starting off with is marking up for your corner now I'm not going to cut the sheet of styrene I'm going to use it whole I've also got uh, some other styrene because I do have the evergreen I do buy it I do use it because it is good stuff uh, but I can't find unbranded sizes that I require now I've got here this is 2 mil by 6.3 mil and I'm just going to use this as a gauge and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a mark there and a mark I should have got a smaller bit on this corner here All right, so then reaching across what I'm going to do then is just use my square and I'm going to square off two lines one that way and one that way like so so we've got that 6.3 mil distance and this is where I'm going to start actually gluing my blocks now gluing the blocks it's a bit of a it's a, it's a pain it's a pain it really is but it's one of them little jobs that have to be done now all I'm using is a sanding stick and when I find some glue let's find some glue uh, super glue not too much technical stuff something to put the glue on with and my blocks and that's all I'm going to be using now what I do do is just rub each block down the sanding stick just once just to take off any burrs and then a little bit of super glue now you want to try and get not hum humongous amounts of super glue on there because the simple reason is it oozes out and we're going to just start with this one in the far corner like so now what I normally do is when it down is get some straight instrument and just pull any super glue away from the actual part because what happens is when you come to cast it in the rubber because the super glue's lipped out a little bit it leaves that imprint in your actual mold and you don't want that and now it's a very very painful task of marking up and I'm using the uh, two mil piece because I'm giving a two mil space in between it well between each other should I say and I'm going to turn that round because it's on the wrong, wrong hand for me and all we're going to do is each time we put one down is we're going to mark up a line like so and we're going to do that and I'm actually going to do eight I'm going to come down here eight blocks and I'm just going to keep doing that now when I get to the end there because I'm not going to let you sit there and watch me do every single one but you get the general gist of what I'm doing I'm, I'm putting a spacer then we're going to glue another block a spacer then we're going to glue another block now when I get to the end I shall come back to you and then we'll start going downwards now I've completed my eight uh, blocks upwards and you're going to say why eight well I try to keep it the same size as the moulds that I'm already using because if you start going bigger I'm going to have to increase the size of my plastic sheets to take the mould and it's going to cause a lot of problems for me 
and that's the reason why I'm keeping it as eight courses and if you can see when I put that mould we're bang on the same size so I don't have to change anything uh, when I actually start using this mould I can use it with everything that I've already got that explains the reason why I'm only doing eight now as you can see I've drawn all my lines coming down yeah and now we start working downwards and we do exactly the same thing all we do is we use this little bit of two mil as a spacer we're going to mark up uh, I've lost my square and then we're just going to put that line across like so to give us our spacing and now I'm going to do exactly the same as what I did there I'm just going to start with a block in this corner I've got my sort of guidelines so I know roughly where to position it like so and I'm going to glue that one down and I'm just going to do another row and I'm going to keep going on doing the rows uh, it's a total of I can't remember now two four six we do seven seven rows all together that will give us 56 parts uh, per mold but that's what I'm going to do now uh, so I'm going to carry on now and, and carry on gluing these uh, until I've come to the end and then I'll come back to you so you don't get too bored now unfortunately the last clip was we had a few technical difficulties with the last clip so I'm going to run through what happened should I say now we'll start with the blocks and as you may have noticed I've got all the blocks glued down and I've also got an extra course so we've got 8 by 8 which is now giving us a, a really respectable 64 parts for this mould then what uh, I did I marked up using my 6mm strip that side and this side as well and then I actually just cut it out using my ruler just cut it out so we've got a separate little mould that's all I did in the last clip uh, apologies for that but uh, these things can't be helped now we've actually got our little mould here now what we need to do next is actually mount this onto another piece of styrene and you're going to say why are you going to mount this onto another piece of styrene well simple reason being if we were to put the sides on this now and make a box when we actually come to put it onto our vibrating table you put it onto your vibrating table and it's going to jump all over the place you're not going to be able to control it so what I actually do is I just glue it to another piece of styrene I mean, we just mark up giving it a, a lip of any size you want you don't have to have a set size we'll just get that cut down get that bit done so I can get that glued down and we can move on to the next bits so put the scores with the old scalpel so we've got the base and what we're going to do now is we're just going to glue that on to the top there I should put a few marks so and also it's great because now you've got this little lip all the way around the side which when you cut your styrene you can glue it against there and it makes it nice and easy now you all know that the styrene you can glue with the, the Tamiya glues so I'm going to get that glued down and then I should come back to you I've glued this uh, piece down as you can see I've glued it to this just using the ordinary Tamir glue and I didn't really say what this bit was actually for when well it thickens the actual mold base up that makes it a lot stronger and also when you put this onto your vibrating table you can use some small clamps to clamp this to the vibrating table so it's not moving around so you can just concentrate on pouring uh, 
your silicon in, into your mould which I will show you uh, because we will go next door and we'll, we'll, uh, I will run through the mixing and the actual pouring of it but first things first what we need to do now is we need to make uh, something to hold all the silicon in and the pieces that we actually cut off now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a piece about 10 mil high I like to make it slightly bigger than what I'm actually going to uh, make the mould so I'm going to roughly do it 10 mil so I'm going to cut two pieces one for either end and I'm also going to cut two uh, for this side using this piece so I'm going to get on and get them cut and then I'll come back to you and we'll put it all together I've uh, cut these pieces I wasn't going to do them at 10 but I did them at 15 uh, just to give myself a little bit of leeway for uh, pouring the mould now it's very very easy all we're going to do is just glue everything together and I'm just going to use a little bit of the Tamiya glue and yes when you come to strip the mould down this does come apart very easily as you will see because we will run through the actual putting together of the mould well casting the mould should I say so we'll just do this one like so but you get the idea use a bit of the uh, thin for the corner like so now I'm just gonna glue the rest of the bits on and uh, then it will be ready for casting now I've put the other sides on that's all complete and next thing I want to do is before we start uh, mixing up any stuff to cast it with is give it a coat of this now this is a liquid wax release agent uh, it, it's quite cheap I think it's about nine pounds for this size bottle it does come with a spray but I don't use the spray uh, because I find it a little bit too heavy so all I do is I've got an old airbrush I decanter a bit put it into the airbrush and now this has had the wax in now for a good three months I haven't cleaned it out it doesn't block your airbrush up it doesn't harm the seals or anything like that in it so if you've got an old airbrush you can just dedicate one just to put your release agent in and all we're going to do is give it a coat like that now I'm going to leave that to dry uh, it takes about what five ten minutes to dry and then I'm, I'm going to give it another coat I'll give it a good two probably even three coats and then it's ready for casting the moulds had a couple of uh, good coats of the release agent breaking these teeth in for the goldfish and we're all ready to get started now when we started this we put this little lip and this is where this little lip comes into its own now when you're clamping it down if you use your plastic sheet on top of your vibrating table and then clamp it down like so it just stops this mold from moving around because it will vibrate along the top of your uh, plastic sheet or across the top of your table that's part of the reason why I just do that little bit also to strengthen up the bottom of the mould as well so we're all ready now to uh, cast so what we're going to do I'm going to move that out the way for a second and we'll move on to actually mixing the stuff up now it's very 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 easy this stuff is to mix up uh, we'll zero that up now uh, volumes 
working out your volume for how much you actually need to uh, fill your mould. I haven't got no great system because I always do it the same way. I just look at it and I think, yeah, we're going to need about 100 grams, 200 grams. And sometimes I'm bang on, sometimes I'm a little bit out, but that's the way it goes. Now, there is formulas out there that you can use to work out the measurements. That bit is totally up to you how you work out what you're actually going to be using. Because uh, like I say, I, I literally judge it. And it's like this mould here. It's going to be about 70 grams, I would say. But I will do 100 because doing 100 is easier to, uh, to do your actual hardener or your activator, should I say. So I know that if I do... 100 grams, three mils of that, that's going to give me, what, 15 to 20 minutes pot life, which gives me ample time to actually get this poured. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get, I'm going to pour 100 grams into the tub. Now the tubs, these are the ultimate thinners, and they are absolutely brilliant. For the simple reason is, they're like a, a, a polythene, and the silicon when it dries it doesn't stick to it and you can clean up and also the wooden sticks use a wooden stick the silicon pulls off it when it's when it's dry and you can reuse it so we're saving money all the way along the line which is good so we'll zero this up and we'll get 100 grams poured <coughs> well 100 grams ish because this stuff is very, very thick. And when you're pouring it, you really got to sort of start slowing down well before your actual target weight, should I say. And there goes a big glump. Yeah, we're close. Right, well, 101. I can live with that. 102. Yeah, we're 102, but I can live with that. We're, we're two grams over. So that's that bit done. We put that to one side. Hardener. We'll zero this back up again. I just use these little uh, shot glasses. Nothing too spectacular. Give that a good shape before we. Uh... So we're going to need three grams for this. And that's four grams or well over. Well, that's as close as we're going to get. That's three uh, three point zero three. So we're just a fraction over, but we've got our three grams. <coughs> Excuse me. Now move that away, and the next thing is to mix it up, and it's very very easy. Um, Hoping that all this light is in shot because I'm not really looking at the screen. Very easy. What I actually do, I work from the outside inwards, like so. Just keep turning the and scraping from the outside into the centre, all the way around, just to make sure that every little last bit is dragged away from the side and it's properly mixed. Sniffles today as well, that doesn't help matters. So there we go, that is mixed. the boring is part of the video mixing up and uh, everything else right now with the vibrating table uh, we'll get it switched on hopefully it ain't going to be too noisy and deafen everything out no we'll keep it at that that sounds pretty good 
Now to start off with, because this is such an intricate little pattern, we want to get just down in between the actual blocks and that. Like so. And I'm doing this uh, really all the way, wrong way around just so you can actually see Now I've done a costing out for this to actually make your mould if you buy your styrene and 100 grams of of your uh, casting material it works out about three pounds to make your first mould and then after that it, the, the moulds that you cast are going to cost you roughly about one pound fifty which isn't a bad price it really isn't a bad price now I don't know if you can see that but we'll try and bring you a little bit closer there we go. all I've done there is literally just gone between the centres and I'm allowing now the air to sort of bubble out and we'll just give that a little bit of a time to shake and I'll get something and you can go around, I'll go around and just pop these bubbles just to give it a helping hand if they excuse the sniffling I do apologise for that coming up just to make life a little bit uh, quicker I, mean, I don't know if you can see but you can actually see the bubbles forming up and coming up to the top and this is where the uh, longer pot life comes in handy because it just gives you that little bit more time just to make sure that you've got no air on the actual mould surface. We'll pop them ones as well. And then ones there. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit more on. Now I'll remind you these all up. There we go. Now I'm actually going to move this uh, table because I know this bottom bit isn't that level. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to move it up to there. And it's going to make a bigger racket up there. I know it is. Just turn that down. Now, what I'm going to do, I'll just move the camera up, sorry about that. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to leave this to vibrate away. I, to be honest with you, what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to go off, make myself a cup of tea. I'm going to leave this vibrating for a good 10 minutes. Because, I don't know if you can see, I mean, that vibration now is doing exactly the same as what we do with the plaster. You can see the air bubbles coming to the surface. So I'm just going to let, let it do its own business. I'm going to go off and have a cup of tea. And in 10 minutes time, I'll come back and switch it off. And then we'll be ready to, well, leave it to cure off and uh, pull the actual mould out of the mould, should I say.
it's been vibrating there for a good 10 12 minutes now quite happy with that I can't see any large air bubbles uh, there's little tiny ones on the surface but they will stop there but the simple reason is the curing has started now and the surface is starting to cure so the air bubbles can't actually get through that sur surface but they're going to be left there but I know that down at the bottom where it's important against the mould face that there's no air trap so I'm now going to switch this off I'm going to leave this now for its three to four hours curing time when that cure time is up I will come back to you and we'll actually take this out and we'll have a look at what we actually got right the moment has arrived to actually break this mold out of the mold and uh, what I'm going to do is break that side break that side break that side and that one that one's come right off but normally what happens is you can just fold them back like so and uh, then you can actually just re-glue them back in again for your next one so we'll just start peeling this off still being gentle with it because we don't want to pull the parts off the actual mould itself like we've done there but there you go we can stick that one back on and we'll come back from this end So we've got two parts that actually came off that time, not too bad, we can put them back and we can glue them back to make the next one. Now we've got, if you can see, we've got plenty of flash on there. Now what I shall do is with a pair of scissors I shall just run around and trim each one off because we don't want them bits when we start casting. Also what I'm going to do is around the edge is just run off this bit of flash all the way around like so get that side done it just makes it look a little bit better that's all so as you don't want bits of flash flapping around when you're trying to cast so we've got that all side done now it is important to actually do this bit because on the bottom edge here it makes a, a lip all the way around and if you don't well it's not mega important when you're doing blocks like this but if you was doing a piece that is actually fl uh, quite flat and you want it flat this actually lifts the mould up and makes the actual mould unlevel so your parts could actually be twisted so I'm just going to run all the way around the bottom like so get rid of that I think I could do with a new pair of uh, scissors because these are not as sharp as what they used to be and that edge there as well And that's it all done like I say I'm going to run around with my scissors and just take them bits off like that which will take a, a couple of minutes to do so that's it and I'm quite happy with that there's no air traps there's nothing in there so the proof is going to be in the pudding so what I'm going to do now I'll finish trimming all these up and we'll, I'll go do a cast and we'll see what they look like so there we go uh, first cast out you look nice and close and they've turned out all right there's no problems with them at all I'm really pleased with them a couple of layer bubbles here and there but I'm not going to worry about them because it is the first cast at mold 
and you will actually get some air traps because of the actual wax and once that all gets washed away cleaned away that will that problem will stop so i'm just going to put you on pause and pull you back right we i've done my cast i've made one mold i've uh, fixed up re-glued the other mold to be so i can make another one and that's it that's the end of this video hopefully it's been of some use hopefully it's sort of like uh helps you not be so worried about making your own molds it is very very easy there's no problems at all i will be doing some other other videos i've got one for les i'm doing this the front of the right star uh, this one particular one was badly damaged in a fire as you can see on the corner and also it was pretty well had a lot of air pockets in that which i've been filling and we're going to try and bring it back to its former glory and also i'll be doing uh, a mold of this and doing some castings of this as well uh, that's all to come we'll also be doing just straight i'll be doing some ones on just straightforward copying of items you know like uh, dragon's teeth and things like that ones that you only want probably want to buy one or two of and you probably want half a dozen so to make a mold and make yourself a few more and also there i'm doing quite a few of my own designs and i will do videos of that of what i'm doing how i'm doing it and for what reasons and that's it hopefully it's been useful and hopefully we will see you on the next video. Until then.